In most states, the presidential election is a two-horse race, with the Libertarian and Greens candidates limping along the track so badly they should be put down. But in Utah, the election is a genuine three-way. Why? It's Utah. They're used to three ways there. Utah is a red state, and its people are conservative, with a small c. The largely Latter-day Saint population are also people of strong moral character. And you know what, there's something about the GOP candidate this year that people just have trouble reconciling with. Trump, when he answers a question, he goes here and there. He has no idea what he's talking about. Embarrassed. My word for him would be embarrassed. The only real choices we got is, is non-acceptable. And that's where Evan McMullen comes in. He's a former spy, banker and refugee worker who grew up in a religious family and holds quaint ideals like The simple truth that all men and women are created equal. After watching Donald Trump spray diarrhea all over the Republican Party, Evan quit his role as a staffer on Capitol Hill and entered the race to give conservatives with a conscience someone they can vote for. In one sentence, what's, what's the incentive to do this epic journey? Because the American people in this country deserve a better, a better choice. It's that simple. Your resume smacks of someone designing a president in Hollywood. Is running for president just another cool thing on your resume? <laughs> Absolutely not. I'm doing this only because, of, because I love this country and I think somebody needed to do it. How much do you think your support here in Utah is based on your relationship to Elliot's community and how much do you think it is issues beyond that? People's principles are informed at times by their faith, but we also have people who don't practice any faith at all supporting us. But they also have those, those principles. So these are American principles, not just Mormon principles. What's your message to people of colour and people who have immigrated to this, to this, uh, to this nation? Like, what, How will you embrace them as opposed to your, your candidate, your rivals? We have a presidential candidate this year in Donald Trump who wants to attack people based on their religion and based on the color of their skin or their gender. That makes us weaker, not stronger. Um, some of our communities, our minority communities, have specific struggles that we need to address. I think the solutions to some of those challenges uh, are complex, but they involve criminal justice reform, they involve education reform, they involve reforming our anti-poverty programs. I've gone and created a bunch of slogans because I noticed you didn't have any slogans okay. on right. any of your merchandise. I'm slightly concerned about what I might see here. How do you think this one would test with your audience? I think they would love it. Mm -hmm. Not Donald Trump. Beautiful, I'd put that on my car. True. Yeah. Okay. It is true, but it doesn't say enough. Right. Evan McMullen knows where Aleppo is. <laughs> He's probably the only one that does. I've been to a lot. Evan McMullen, not a skinhead, just bald. He had some hair. I'm surprised that there are more. There aren't more bald slogans here. Frankly, I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> Muslims are people too. Love yeah, it. yeah. True. I think I've said that very thing. So we we're good with that. Hashtag never Trump. Sometimes McMullen. No. Do you think that, that's a hashtag that'll catch on? Okay, no, I don't actually. Always McMullen? Well, How do we get it? Four year terms, you can't really get Hashtag never Trump for a time McMullen. That'll fit along an F-150 bumper. That's perfect, and those are my people. Evan McMullen, not grabbing anyone by anything. <laughs> 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 Anything about that one? That is my favorite one. Can we do it? Can we turn it into a hashtag though? I'd like to see that on a billboard in New York City. 